Alrighty folks, it is your boy Seppo Boy here coming at you guys with another vlog. This week I am talking about my first and only world title so far. So, well, actually I'm just gonna eat first and get to the story in a few minutes. I'm eating uh, this uh, chicken noodle thing with veggies uh, that my girlfriend Hanna made. It's awesome, it's my favorite food, it's pretty spicy. And I also have a couple of uh, Finnish Karelian pies that I'm gonna put some cheese and uh, butter on. But uh, yeah, I'm just gonna get to the story after I'm done. I'll see you soon. All right, so as I already said, today we're gonna be talking about what happened 10 years ago. So I went to play amateur world championships in Ohio, and that was my first time traveling. Actually, not first time traveling outside the country. Uh, but traveling the US for disc golf. So that was my first time 10 years ago in 2010. And uh, that was mainly a family trip. I had most of my family with me and we went to Chicago prior to the event. And it was just a holiday. Uh, we spent time in Chicago doing regular stuff that uh, tourists do, seeing the city, seeing the buildings. Uh, and stuff like that. Then we drove to the tournament place, which I don't exactly remember where exactly it was, but I'll have the name of the city or area right here. It was in mid-Ohio, I remember that. I had pretty low expectations, honestly. I did not know exactly how uh, good of a good the level is gonna be. I played in junior, 16 and under. I was myself uh, 15 years old at the time. And my dad was like saying all the time, kind of like try, trying to not get my expectations too high, saying we're just having fun, like don't worry about the position, winning is going to be extremely hard. And I knew it is, but I also really, really knew that I could win. I was I was good at the time, I was sponsored by uh, Discmania, I got 20 discs a year and two shirts. So uh, that was really cool at the time. Yeah, let's just get right into it. Am Worlds is a really cool event if you're an Am and you want to play world championships, I really do recommend you playing Am Worlds. You know, it was really cool doing the registration at the event center and, do, you know, the opening ceremony. I got to carry the flag in the opening ceremony and, uh, you know, real cool experiences, especially for the, being the first time in the US for disc golf. And uh, one notable thing was that my English was basically not existing. I could not speak English at the time. So that made it, you know, very exciting for me. And also a little scary, honestly, you know, competing with all Americans and uh, some Europeans, uh, it was different. But uh, yeah, first round, I played real good. I had really young kids in my card, or at least they were really small, smaller than I was. I had kind of already got tall and uh, I really started off the tournament relaxed and, you know, no expectations. My putting and everything was good and uh, started rolling. You know, back then worlds used to be like six or seven rounds plus the final nine. So uh, my biggest competitors were Andrew Coggins, who had won world championships in the younger divisions. I think he was already two-time world champion. Uh, John Tompkins, who is Paul McBeth's caddy. I believe he's been caddying for Paul for all of his five world titles. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, and then Felix Bonn, who is from France. He is really, really good. He still competes and I have competed with him in Europe more when I was younger and I kind of knew Felix. But those were my main competitors and pretty much right after first round, I competed with those people for the most part, but uh, Andrew was always there. Since the first round, we tied the first round, we I beat him the second round by like one or two and I was really off to a hot start and we were right there together since the beginning and it really kept going like that throughout the rounds. And one funny and notable thing was that, as I said, I got like one day of practice, but how we practiced was like the first day we I played two rounds of tournament, and then I went to practice the course for the second day. And uh, I did that after each day because we played several courses. I played the tournament round, and then I went to play the practice round for tomorrow. 
So I played three rounds the first day of the tournament, which is nuts to think about right now. But yeah, uh, Andrew and I kept going together, kind of separated ourselves in the early rounds from the rest that we didn't really, our, at least I didn't think about really anybody else except Andrew. Uh, he was really skilled, an amazing putter. He had this snake strike putt, putted real hard with his challengers. And uh, he's a friend of David Wiggins. They used to practice together all the time. It was like maybe fourth round where I got separation to Andrew by like three strokes. After the semi-final round, I was leading Andrew. No, okay, two rounds left. I was leading Andrew by one stroke. And after the semi-final round, which was the sixth round, I believe, my level kind of dropped a little bit during the tournament. I started off so good. So going through the tournament, my level or both of our level kind of dropped, but we were tied going into the final. Final nine was at this campus. I don't even believe I had played all of the holes in the practice because I did not exactly know how it was played. It was uh, not a permanent course. They put the baskets there right before the finals. But we both started off hot with Andrew. Birdie, birdie, like par, birdie. And then on like fifth or sixth hole, Andrew got the best of me by two strokes. And uh, I remember being like, oh sh I got a stroke on the second to the last hole, if I remember correctly. This is all 10 years ago, so I can't remember 100%. But I think I got a stroke on him on the second to the last hole. So we, he was leading me by one stroke going into the last hole. And let me tell you already, this is pretty remarkable. This is pretty amazing what happened. It was a hole where you could lay up like 250. And then there was a water which was like 100 feet. And then the basket was on, on the other side. So if you went to the other side, you had to throw, you had to throw pretty far, like 450 actually to get over over the water to the basket it was par four but pretty much everybody laid up so i had to go for it I, I knew no matter what i have to go for it and uh, there was no tee pads and i was playing with these really bad shoes you know nike shocks look at those shoes those are awful dude actually kind of cool but never mind uh i slipped there was no tee pads i slipped i threw my dd up in the air and I was like, that's in the middle of the water. But honestly, pretty early in the flight, like where it, where it was at the highest of the flight, pretty much, I was like, I think that that disc is gonna land on a bridge that went over the water, probably about 400 feet away from where I was thrown from, 350, 400 feet away. And this bridge was maybe 15, maybe maybe 12 feet wide. And uh, I saw that it might land on it. There was a lot of people around there. So I could not know, or I could not see if it landed on it. But I remember people were quiet for a second and then they started cheering like crazy. And I was like, oh my God, like I legitimately landed on that bridge. And the bridge was in play because hole one went over that bridge and not everybody could go get over the water. So some people actually had to play on that bridge. Uh, Andrew laid up through his second shot, a little past the basket, like 30 to 40 feet under this uh, pine tree. And I was by this uh, bridge uh, fence or a handle, which was really high. So I had to kind of, kind of throw this real high shot, high release through my putter threw it to about 15 feet um, and I knew that this is the moment like if Andrew makes this he's the world champion and he went there he hit the chains pretty hard left side though real high and chained out and I had this 15 footer the most stressful part of my life at the time uh, made it luckily and we were off to a sudden death oh my god we were we had played like probably close to a hundred holes and we were tied with Andrew. We had a sudden death. It was hole one on that bridge again, which we both took a birdie on the first uh, time we played it, the first hole of the final nine. And Andrew actually threw a grenade on that hole 
and I just threw the spike hyzer with my firebird. Andrew throws again a little bit too far, a little bit too far, a uh, similar way to hole 9 where he was under this tree and probably about 30 to 40 feet away. And uh, he goes there and he misses the putt. I think he hit the top of the basket. And I had my shot in about 20 feet. So now I was in the situation where if I make this putt, I'm going to be world champion in junior 16 and under. Um, I go there. It was windy. It was real breezy, kind of headwind. And uh, back then I used to have this real hard spin putt. And not too much of hesitation. Put that disc in the basket and I was crowned the world champion. I was really excited as you can think. I was 15 years old. I had traveled from Finland to US to play my first time in the US. I did not know the language. I had no friends in the US. I, I was world champion and returning to Finland was awesome. Uh, obviously after that I actually got on the news. It was kind of like the sports center in Finland. In the prize ceremony, I was so nervous, you know, there was probably like 20 divisions and I was like one of the last divisions, so I got to think of my speech and I said something like this. I want to thank all the competitors and my family. Thank you. Something like that. It was real fast, real simple, but I, I knew how to say something. Maybe even got some help from my brother. But uh, yeah, that was that was it. And uh, real cool thing, I got this basket as a trophy, which I still have in my room at my parents' house. It's still one of the better disc golf memories I have. And that year overall, 2010, David Wiggins Jr. won the Advanced Series or Advanced Division. Uh, Ricky Waisaki won the Juniors 19 and Under Division. Paige Birkes won Juniors 16 and Under Division. So that was a big year for a lot of great uh, disc golfers that are professionals right now and uh, a great memory. If you're thinking about going to Am Worlds, I really do recommend it. It's a great experience, it's fun and uh, it's, it's not too serious. Uh, but that is it. If you have any questions, uh, I'll be trying to respond to them in the comment section. Thanks for watching. I will see you guys next week. Lietolainen Seppo Paju tähtää frisbee-golfin ammattilaiseksi. 15-vuotias frisbee-taituri on jo näyttänyt osaamistaan tänä kesänä kuittaamalla itselleen junioreiden maailmanmestaruuden. Edellisen kerran lajin MM-kultaa on saatu Suomeen yli 20 vuotta sitten. Tänä vuonna on ollut varmaan yhden päivän treenaamassa. Ei muu se ainakaan varmaan viisi päivää vuodessa, kun mä en heitä niinku yhtään. Et kyllä mä sit, jos mä kunnolla mietin, että nyt treenataan, niin kyllä mä sit ainakin käyn ihan muutama häitä heittää. Kyllä niistäkin hyötyy. Ahkera harjoittelu on tuottanut tulosta. Paju on ehtinyt tänä kesänä ja kuitata itselleen Frisbeegolfin maailmanmestaruuden juniorisarjassa. Nuori Frisbeetaituri innostui lajista muutama vuosi sitten. Ensi kosketus frisbee-golfiin on tullut jo aiemmin, sillä isä on harrastanut lajia 70-luvulta lähtien. Meillä oli sitten niitä frisbeitä paljon ennestään. Sitten mä huomasin Hongkongin esittäjät, että siellä on frisbeet myynnissä ja mä ajattelin, että elääks toi laji muka vielä. Ja mä lähdin kokeilemaan ja kuulin, että Kaarinassa on rota ja sitten sinne mentiin saman tien ja siitä sitten heitelty neljä vuotta. Paju haaveilee yltävänsä jonakin päivänä frisbee-golfin ammattilaispelaajaksi. Suomessa kyllä on oikeastaan mahdoton, mutta kyllä jos Yhdysvaltoihin muuttaa, niin kyllä se muuttuu todeksi. Ensin on kuitenkin hoidettava koulu. Paju aloittaa syksyllä opinnot Turun kauppaoppilaitoksessa. Seuraava tavoite frisbee-golfin osalta on paikkalajin arvostetuimmassa turnauksessa, johon otetaan 200 maailman parasta pelaajaa. Kisapaikan lunastaminen vaatii pajulta hyvää sijoitusta ensi kuun alussa järjestettävissä SM-kisoissa. Joka päivä tai kaksi viikkoa on nyt on harjoiteltava. Ja mietittävä, että sen voi voittaa, että se on vain itästä kiinni. Ja kyllä se taitotaso siihen riittää, mutta sitten pitää vaan olla tasainen ja onnistua.